Jordan Peele is known for keeping his audiences talking about his films, and Nope is no exception. There's a lot to think about after viewing Nope, whether it's that stand-up sneaker or what jean jacket is. But one question remains, what do you know about Nope's final shot? Some people read it without ambiguity, while others believed it wasn't as plain as it appeared. Here's what we know. Well, what do we know about the final act of Nope? To recap, OJ, Daniel Kaluuya, Emerald, Kiki Palmer, Angel, Brandon Perea, and Antler's Holst, Michael Wincott, seek to catch the opera shot of Jean Jacket. In the last act of Nope, this alien entity has been residing on OJ and Emerald's ranch. OJ successfully brings Jean Jacket to Antler's view after he munches on a TMZ reporter and they get the shot. It is insufficient for Antlers, and he ultimately kills himself since we do not deserve the impossible. Whilst Angel barely survives his confrontation after wrapping himself in barbed wire, OJ realizes his sister is in danger, so he distracts Jean Jacket's attention to allow Emerald to escape on the reporter's motorcycle. We witness OJ gently backing away from Jean Jacket on his horse before finally looking up and staring at him. As we follow Emerald to Jupiter's claim, we don't see what happens to OJ after this. She places a coin-operated camera in a well to capture the opera picture of Jean Jacket, who seems to die after devouring the park's balloon mascot which bursts inside. Moving on, here are some more specifics from Nope's recap. Emerald looks across to the entrance of Jupiter's claim in the final image of Nope, where she sees OJ riding his horse, her brother still sporting the same bright orange Scorpion King crew sweatshirt he was wearing when we last saw him. You could interpret the situation as it appears and think that OJ survived his altercation with Jean Jacket, or you could read the scene and believe that OJ died. Similarly, others assume that Emerald sees a vision or hallucination of her brother, and that Jean Jacket indeed devoured him. In reality, it probably depends on how hopeful you are. If it's any consolation, here is Jordan Peele on the final shot. However, as is customary with the filmmaker, don't expect him to provide a clear answer to the puzzle. Quote, I believe I created a film with a pretty clear sequence of events is what to occurred. I believe it is apparent and I will leave it at that. Unquote. He told the New York Times about it. Quote, when a tale succeeds, it's because I'm tapping into someone else's story. What I'm curious about is what you originally thought. I know what I was thinking, but what were you thinking is more important to me. Throughout the film, OJ speculates that while Jean Jacket is a predatory creature that attacks anybody it perceives as a threat, it is similar to the horses at their ranch and may be broken if handled with respect. What are your thoughts on this? Please leave a comment below and tell us. Next up, Jordan Peele discusses the possibility of a Nowhere sequel. Quote, we're not telling all of these stories. Oscar winner Jordan Peele may not be through with the universe of his critically plays third picture, Nope. Peele hinted at the possibility of more Nope films in an interview with the New York Times published on Monday after being questioned about a character listed on IMDb as Nobody. Who has piqued the internet's interest? While Michael Bush is credited for the part, the character does not appear in the film, despite being featured in the final trailer. So what exactly is going on there? There's a lot of intriguing detective work going on, Peel explained. I can tell you that the character's narrative is yet to be told, which is another way of expressing, I'm delighted people are paying attention. Quote, I think fans will receive more questions on some of these things in the future, Peel continued. We're not tired of recounting these stories. Peel's third film following Get Out and Us centers on Otis, OJ, Haywood Jr., Daniel Kaluuya, and Emerald M. Haywood Kiki Palmer, the children of a film set horse trainer and wrangler Otis Haywood Sr., Keith David. They look to keep his business alive after his untimely death and find themselves caught in cat and mouse with a UFO since its July 2022 release by Universal Pictures. Nope has earned approximately $150 million. Peel directed the horror film from his material, and the cast included Steven Yen, Barbie Ferreira, Brandon Perea, and Michael Wincott. Peel also co-produced with Ian Cooper under his Monkey Paw production studio, with the picture being filmed as part of Universal's exclusive five-year pact. Following that, other news, Glow star secures next significant role in the new horror film. Sunita Manny, the actress of Glow, has won her next starring role in Wilder Than Her, a new horror thriller. According to Deadline, Jessica Kozak wrote and directed the film, which has concluded filming in Guerneville, California. 
As supporting performers, it also features Kate Easton, When They See Us, Kayla Foster, Call Jane, and Danny DeFerrari, Oppenheimer. The film will address bereavement, gaslighting, and female friendship with a thriller twist. It follows a group of close friends named Amelia, Finn, and Lucy as they seek to reconnect on their annual camping trip after losing their most intimate friend, B. However, things take a turn for the worse as odd and unsettling events occur in the remote woodland, all while their bond unravels. Sunita Mani was last seen in Glow, which was abruptly terminated by Netflix in 2020 after three seasons, although the show had already been renewed for a fourth season, which would also be its final. The reason, according to series producer Liv Flahive and Carly Mensch, was that COVID-19 epidemic which caused production to be halted in early 2020. Quote, COVID has murdered real people. It is a national disaster that must be addressed. COVID also appears to have taken down our show. Unquote. At the time, Flahive and Mensch informed Deadline, quote, Netflix will not complete the final season of Glow. We were given artistic license to create a complex comedy about women and express their tales and fight and that is no longer the case. Moving on, the star of Netflix's rom-com Umbrella Academy talks about working alongside his wife. Tom Hopper, star of Umbrella Academy, has spoken out about working on their upcoming Netflix rom-com with his wife, Love in the Villa, which debuted on Netflix this week. Stars Tom alongside his real-life partner, Laura Hopper. The film centers on Cassie, Laura, Charlie's status-obsessed fiancé, Tom, Julia, Cat Graham, mistakenly double books a holiday at the villa where the couple is staying, and soon a bond forms between them. Despite being cast as the villain, it turns out that Tom's wife was the one who convinced him to take on the project. Quote, she reads a lot of the screenplays that are submitted to me, Tom told Entertainment Weekly. I just read this fantastic script called Love in the Villa, she said. It's a pretty cute rom-com that you should read. I read it and agreed it was wonderful. Laura, who is also an actor, said, Oh, I adore one of these characters as well, Cassie, he said. Tom went on to say that he enjoys working alongside his wife. However, he said it was strange having to split up with her character given that they are happily married off screen. I enjoy working with my wife, Hopper says. She's hilarious. She's a fantastic comedy actor. What was strange was that I broke up with her in the film. This is extremely bizarre playing out this scenario. I thought while we were doing it, she's nothing like that in real life, but she enjoys playing humorous characters. Well, what do you think of this partnership? Is it easy to cope with it working with your wife? Please leave a comment below. Finally, the Sanderson sisters' origin tale will be revealed in the opening scene of Hocus Pocus 2. Hocus Pocus 2 will ultimately unveil the origins of the Sanderson sisters' witchy existence. In an interview with EW, director Anne Fletcher revealed the film's opening scene sequence which would begin with a flashback to the 1600s New England and feature child actors playing younger version of the witches, Winifred, Bette Midler, Sarah, Sarah Jessica Parker, and Mary, Kathy Najemi. And years before his sad fate as Winifred's lover, a young Billy Butcherson will make a surprise cameo. Quote, we get a tiny kiss, forgive the pun, of the Billy part of it and the environment they lived in and what happened to the witches in the movie's opening sequence. The filmmaker stated, Fletcher stated that she missed the Genesis story in the first picture asking, like, why are the witches the way they are? I did have that question, then the screenplay came and I adored the opening 1600s. She said, I pushed that a little bit more because I wanted to hint just a little bit at the concept that the 1600s and now are the same. There is no distinction, I merely wanted to poke fun at the irony. But in the film's fun, you see their youthful version have a good time and understand what happened to them. Fletcher also stated that the trio's mythology would include some great shocks, claiming they were not originally witches. She also indicated that the sisters' narrative would be intertwined with the three modern-day adolescents who revived them in modern-day Salem. Well, that marks the end of our video for today. We hope you liked it. On your way out, make sure to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.